In part one of this series, we worked on the beginning steps for making our Raspberry Pi door sensor interactive through the internet by building a web API in Node.js, with which we can arm or disarm the system and get recent door state changes using specific web addresses. However, I hope it's pretty obvious that doing this on your phone all the time is absolutely ridiculous. We can, though, write a convenient mobile app that does this dirty work for us and even get us real-time information. What's up guys, welcome to Tech Tuts, and today we'll be making this app and also diving a little bit into Firebase Cloud Messaging. For the app, we needed to do the following things. We needed to be able to 1. Arm or disarm the sensor 2. Retrieve the most recent events saved on the server and 3. Notify us in real time of any changes. Let's get right to it. Open up Android Studio and create a new project, yada yada yada, then make your activity main look like this. It's a linear layout with a toggle button for arming, a regular button for refreshing, and a list view which will list the events. The regular button, by the way, should have an on-click method called refresh events which will implement the main activity. Then assuming you've watched the Kodi remote video, you should know the basics of using volley. So let's create a class with this static method to handle volley HTTP requests. It's static so that we can call this from multiple classes. For now, it seems we'll just call them from inactivity, but you'll see otherwise in a few minutes, so just hang tight. Now in the main activity, define some essentially constant strings which will be used as the URL for web requests to the Raspberry Pi. Then let's write the methods, send request, and update events. Send request will construct the URL based on the parameters command and param based on the specifications of the server. Then we send the get request through the volley class, and if it succeeds, if we're asking for the events in the first place, call update events using the response, or send another request, this time actually asking for the events. If it fails, we'll display a little toast message saying network error or something. Now on to update events. Since we receive JSON data, we'll process it as such, using the built-in JSON data types. We'll store all the entries in the events array into an array list of hash maps, which will be useful when using the simple adapter. Adapters in Android are used to help populate a view based on some data. A simple adapter provides an easy-to-use solution for setting the data of a certain element in a list item to the value of something in a map. In this case, well, the text field will just be whatever's associated with events. Then let's implement refresh events from the refresh button in the activity. As the name says, it'll simply refresh the events list on screen based on newly retrieved data. Then we'll set the on check change listener of the arm toggle button to simply send the new arm state to the server. Now, we can certainly run it now, and it'll suffice, but if you followed along the past two videos, you'll know that sending the text message takes a little bit of time, and the app currently doesn't even refresh automatically. This is where Firebase and Firebase Cloud Messaging comes in handy. So head over to firebase.google.com, then click go to console. You'll be brought to this page, so just click add new app, and then give it a name, and don't worry about anything else really. Just create the project, and let it do its thing. Once it's loaded, you'll be brought to this page. You can scroll around and look at all the different Firebase features, like cloud messaging, notifications, stuff like that. But we won't worry about it right now, we'll come back to it in a bit. According to the graphic in the beginning, the job of the server is to notify Firebase, which will then in turn notify our Android device. To do this, we need to implement Firebase not only in the Android app, which is kind of obvious and we'll do in a bit, but also on the server side as well. Google does provide a nice easy way to use Firebase in your Node.js app, however, this can be made even easier using a module called Node GCM. The GCM was the old name of this service. Anyway, it provides an easy to use interface from which we will base our GCM or FCM rather uh, module off of. So in the terminal, go ahead and type npm install node GCM dash save. And this should import the Node GCM library. 
So in our project, I've gone ahead and already created a folder called GCM, or this should be FCM rather, uh, and a file called index.js inside of it. In index.js, most of this code is just copy-paste from the basic usage guide from Node.GCM. However, we do take into account uh, a new field we're going to introduce in the cred.json file. We also return the methods send message, which inexplicably sends the message, and also insert reg token, or the registration token, which is used to identify the device to send the notification to. In this case, reg tokens is an array that's just going to contain a bunch of strings, which are the tokens, which are huge. But what about that new field in create.json that I mentioned? Well, let's get to it right now. Open that up and add a new string called server key, and that's gonna be where your server API key is going to be. In order to get that, go back to the Firebase console, get in your project, and then click the gear in like the top left corner, click project settings, cloud messaging, and then you'll see the server key right there. So copy and paste that long string and put that in the uh, server key field in credit.json. So back to our root index.js, let's instantiate an instance of our FCM or GCM object that we create. Then let's add a new routing path, this time to insert the reg token, so forward slash reg token, forward slash you know, reg token parameter, and we're going to call insert reg token. This is going to be helpful in a bit, so just keep watching. Then back in post message, well, Instead of sending a text message, let's send the notification, Let, let's send the GCM message. And if that fails, well, as a parameter of send message, let's send the text message. So now server side, you're ready to go. Now let's implement Firebase in Android. So in Android Studio, go to the menu bar, click Tools, Firebase. And on the right side, you'll see this little panel. Go ahead and click Firebase Cloud Messaging and then connect your app to Firebase, add FCM to your app. It'll bring up a little dialog window in the middle. Just follow that. And then you'll see that we need to access the device registration token. This is what I was talking about that needs to go in that array that we just saw. So just follow the directions here. And in our case, what we're doing with the registration token is saving it to internal memory via shared preferences, and then sending that to the server so the server knows who to send it to. Also in the Android manifest, you want to add this class as a service. While we're here in Android manifest, make sure to add the internet permission to it if you haven't already. And also, let's add the service for the next thing we're going to work on, which is the messaging service, to actually do something when we receive a message, other than display the notification automatically. Most of this is just copy-pasted from the directions on the right side. However, we're also sending what's called a broadcast, so we can trigger whatever's listening in to do something. Alright guys, almost done. <laughs> Go back to the main activity, and let's instantiate this broadcast receiver, which, when it receives something, will just update the events. Also, remember how we saved the registration token into shared preferences? Well, on the onCreate, let's send the registration token just in case. And now, the grand reveal of our project. Let's test it out. And there we go! 
our Raspberry Pi door sensor is now fully interactive and actually convenient to use. Isn't that nice? So thanks for watching this video guys, hope it helps, hope you thought it was cool, and if you did, please consider liking, sharing this video with your friends, and subscribing, it helps a lot. In the meantime guys, I will see you later.